Hello friends, I am Reshmi. Welcome to SRS Info. Today, we will continue with the classification of tablets. In the last class, we discussed about the molded tablets. Okay. Today, we will continue with the compressed tablets and cover the first five types that is oral, chewable, buccal and sublingual, lozenges and soluble tablets. Nowadays, most of the tablets are prepared by the compression method. Okay, the most commonly used tablets are the compressed tablets and these compressed tablets are classified on the basis of their use, their route of administration and also the demanded effect. Okay. So let us start with oral tablets. What is oral tablets? Just the tablet put on the mouth and take with a drink of water. Simply we can say these are the oral tablets and these constitute the major group of the compressed tablets. Most of the compressed tablets are coming under this oral tablets category. And two types of tablets are coming under this. What are the two types? One category is those tablets which disintegrate in the stomach and dissolve in the gastric fluid. Or those tablets which is just past the stomach. It will not absorb in the stomach, just pass through the stomach and it disintegrate in the intestine. Now you are already uh, familiar with this term endericotid. We have many times explained about these terms. The endericotid tablets are those tablets which does not absorb in the stomach and it disintegrate in the intestine only. So both these types of tablets are coming under this oral tablets. Okay. And in those types of tablet which disintegrate in the stomach, the medicament should be freely soluble in the GI fluid. Why? Th these tablets dissolve in the gastric fluid. In the next case, that is those tablets which absorb in the intestine, the disintegrating agent must be added because it needs the disintegration in intestine. So in the cases of endricotid tablet, the dis disintegrating agent must be added. But in the cases of this uh, tablets which absorbed in the stomach, the medicament should be freely soluble in the GI fluid. So these points should be taken care at the time of preparation of oral tablets, depending on their desired effect. Okay. The next one is chewable tablets. What is it? These are the tablets which is absorbed by chewing. This is simply we can understand by the term chewable tablets. Those tablets which are required to be broken and chewed between the teeth before ingestion. These are chewable tablets. This is required to be broken and chewed between the teeth. See here. And commonly used preparations are antacid. Many types of antacid and multivitamin tablets are available in the form of chewable tablets. And one of the most important point to be noted in the case of chewable tablet is the base should be very proper and the most commonly used base is mannitol. Why mannitol is used commonly? Because it is chemically inert, non-hygroscopic and thermostable. These qualities make it common so that the storage condition of this chewable tablet can be prepared very properly. You know the chewable tablets has to be broken immediately. It has to be disintegrated immediately in the mouth. It is chewing. It must be very uh, easily chewable so that it is very soft. Okay. And in the same situation, the storage condition should be also considered. So the chemically inert, non-hygroscopic and thermostable mannitol is used commonly. But this use of mannitol makes the tablet more costly. So in the cases of cheaper tablets, other sweetening agents or base are also used. What are they? Sorbitol, lactose, chocolate powder, dextrose, glycine, etc. are also used in the case of chewable tablet as base, as a sweetening base. Okay. What are the essential qualities which make a chewable tablet a good one? Let us see. It should be very acceptable taste and flavor. We have already discussed the sweetening agent and base is added to enhance its taste, their color and which makes it more attractive. And it should disintegrate in a short period of time and it should produce a cool sweet taste. It's chewable so it should disintegrate in a very short period of 
time. The use of gums and other substances which produce hard granules should be avoided. Why? Again, it should be disintegrated in a very short period of time. So, its manufacturing process should be accordingly. So, hard granules should be avoided. The lubricants used should have agreeable taste. Mainly, jewable tablets is uh, based on the taste. Taste is a very important factor. Jewable tablets give some advantages also. What are they? It can be given to children and adults who have difficulty in swallowing or dislike swallowing. In most of the cases, some adult patients or children do not like swallowing the hard medicines. So, chewable tablets make them convenient to take the medicament properly. And it can be taken anywhere because even it does not need water also. So, it is very convenient to take these tablets at anywhere and do not need more disintegrating agent. Why? There is no need to go to this GI tract to disintegrate etc. So, it, it disintegrates in the mouth itself. So, there is no need to add any extra disintegrating agent in the case of chewable tablets. These are the advantages of chewable tablets. The next one is buccal and sublingual tablets. What does actually this mean? See here. Buccal is this is when we put the tablet in the buccal cavity. Okay. And in the cases of sublingual, the tablet is put in beneath the tongue, below the tongue. That is sublingual. This is buccal. This is the only difference. Otherwise, the method of administration and the category coming under the same. It is common. Buccal tablets are required to place in the buccal pouch or between the gums and lips or cheeks, cheeks for slow release of medicament. The sublingual tablets are placed under the tongue. In and both of the cases, this dissolve or disintegrate very slowly and are absorbed directly without part passing into the alimentary canal. It, it absorbed from the mucal cavity itself. It does not go and does not pass through this GI tract. It's a point to be noted. It contains those drugs. So, buccal and sublingual tablets contain those drugs which are destroyed, inactivated or not absorbed in the GI tract. This is the advantages of this. Those drugs, those medicaments which may be destroyed, inactivated or not absorbed in the GI tract can be administered through this route, buccal and sublingual tablets. Why? It is directly absorbed through the mucosal tissues of this oral cavity. There is mucosal tissues in the oral cavity and these medicaments directly absorbed through this mucosal tissues so that there is no need to go to this GI tract. And because of this reason, again, it contains large proportion of sweetening agents because from the onset of that administration till its absorption, the medicament is kept in the mouth or the buccal cavity itself so that the use of sweetening agent is increased in this case. The addition of sweetening agent is promoted because most of the time medicaments has uh, does not have many uh, sweet taste okay attractive taste most of the time it is bitter so the sweetening and coloring or flavoring agent these are the additives which make the tablets more palatable to take by the patient the next one is lozenge tablet the lozenge tablets are mainly used to treat the throat infection or disturbances due to cough or cold so the main onset or site of action of this lozenges tablet is the mucous membrane of the throat. Lozenges tablets dissolve slowly in the mouth to produce continuous effect on the mucous membrane. Okay, it should not disintegrate or dissolve immediately. It should dissolve very slowly and the effect should be continuous. Why? It should affect on the mucous membrane of the throat. The main action is the throat is on the throat should, should not it should not disintegrate in the oral cavity and no disintegrating agent is added again there is no need of disintegration or immediate disintegration so that there is no additional disintegrating agent is added in this lozenges tablets but the quantity of binding agent is increased increased and the quality of this agent is also very important why this binding agent is added it makes a united wholesome effect cohesiveness what we can say the cohesiveness is very important why because the effect should be for a long time it should not disintegrate easily so it has to be binded for a long time so the quantity of binding agent is increased to produce 
slow dissolution the dissolution should be slow so that the binding agent must be increased in quantity it again contains the sweetening and flavoring agent and the next one is soluble tablets what is soluble tablets soluble tablets are those tablets which is dissolved in a uh, concentrated or specified quantity of solution to make proper concentrated solution for different purposes what are the purposes just used as mouthwashes gargles skin lotion douches antibiotics and in the form of certain vitamin preparations for all these purposes the soluble tablets are used these are required to dissolve completely in the liquid to produce solution of definite concentration one point to be noticed here is that in the last class we discussed about the dispensing tablets okay what is the function of dispensing tablets the, these are th those tablets can be dissolved in a particular quantity of liquid to make injectable preparations do you remember and the use of that injectable preparation is decreased or restricted nowadays why there is a question of sterility the same question is coming here also so that it is not promoted to use these soluble tablets for preparing injectable solutions it is used only to prepare mouthwashes gargles skin lotions etc okay this is soluble tablet now we completed the first five sections first five types of tablets we will continue the classification in the coming session also hope you like this class Thank you. Thank you so much.